السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters, unfortunately, I know many of you are probably taken in by the actual title of this particular talk. And I know some people are going to say it was actually clickbait. <laughs> MashaAllah. Um, we'll get into, and inshallah, I'll explain the reason why we chose or selected to use that title. Why is Nafis Abu Zaid is a deviant? Why is he a deviant? And the reason why we use this title and the reason why we chose to even talk about this topic, mashallah, number one, it is a form of clickbait that we use the title and word it and, and select that word. Number two, for many people who say that this title or this topic can be what they call something that is that is that is provoking uh, fitna something that is provoking fitna something that is bringing about fitna I would say I don't agree with you a hundred percent why because as Shaykh Rathamee in Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhi he mentioned that if someone and this is, was his own words he said if someone was to call me an innovator a mubtadir um I will feel something, this is the Sheikh words, he said, I will feel something in my heart about it. If someone was to call me an innovator, I will feel something in my heart about it. Brothers and sisters, in this talk, you're going to learn why calling someone an innovator or even calling someone a fasic um, is all correlated to even calling someone a disbeliever. And that's why it's serious. It's a serious offense in Al-Islam. It is something that the tongue cannot run loose with. According to the deen of Al-Islam, you don't hear the people of ilm speaking or using these type of words. And we're going to learn when they will even apply it, uh, these type of words, inshallah. We would like to start off with a verse in the Quran showing the serious offense of this, the nature of this. is that's the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi surat al-Nisa. Allah say, Ya ayyuhal adina amanu, idha darabatum fil ardi, idha darabatum fi sabidillah. Allah said, oh you who believe, addressing the believers, when you travel in the way of Allah, فَتَبَيَّنُوا Verify the information, verify, clarify things. وَلَا تَكُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ لَسْتَ مُؤْمِنًا And do not say to someone you meet in your, on your travels or in your way, and they extend to you the Islamic salutation, do not say that you are not a believer. Do not say that you are not a believer. Here, brothers and sisters, this is called takfir. Takfir, tabdir, or tafsik, all are twin brothers. Okay? They are related. This is declaring someone to be a non-believer. And this is something that we know from another narration with the Prophet Wasallam, when he was informed of an individual on the battlefield being killed at the time that he said that's a shahada. And he said, did you split his heart open? Have you split his heart open? What would tell you or show you that that person wasn't a believer when he made that statement? Did you split his heart open? This is how severe the situation is. The companion said that who did this, the companion said that I wish I wasn't even born at that time when the Prophet reiter reiterated it over three times. This is how serious offense this is. So Allah said, do not say to a person who meets you and extends the Islamic salutation to you that you are not a believer. Then Allah said the reason why. He said, Tabtawuna. Seeking some pleasure from the life of this world by doing this. Because with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's abundance of spoil. Alright, and this verse has a sabab, it has a reason for it was being revealed. We're not going into that. You can go back to the tafsir of Kathir. He brings about the caravan uh, and the Muslims that overcame something and they actually um, dealt with an individual who actually was Muslim at this time and he said that he wasn't a believer, etc. Um, Allah said likewise 
before Allah guided you, because first and foremost, you can't be a Muslim unless Allah do what? Open your breast. If you can't accept Islam unless Allah open, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, sadrahu lil-islami, for the one whom we have opened his breast to al-Islam. Think about that. Meaning that Islam, you didn't chose Islam, Allah chose it for you. So if Allah chose Islam for you, how about the Sunnah? How about the Sunnah? One of the scholars, they said that I don't know which one is a ni'mah, me being guided to Islam or me being guided to the Sunnah. How about the Sunnah? If Allah chose Islam for you, how about the Sunnah? You think you just happen to be upon the Sunnah or happen to come upon the Sunnah? No, if Allah opened your breast to Islam, then it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise opening your breast to the Sunnah. Don't be fooled. And then Allah says, likewise, you were before Allah opened your breast to Islam. You were a non-believer. So Allah is giving them what? A reality check. Don't be so hasty and be judgmental because you were. Then Allah said, فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا Allah conferred His favor. Meaning what? He gave you Islam. He conferred His favor upon you. So don't be so hasty to tell somebody they aren't a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to enter Islam. Not the other way around. يَمُنُّونَ إِسْلَامُكُمْ As Allah Jalla wa'ala says, يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ They considered their Islam a favor to you, O Muhammad. Talking about the Bedouin Arabs at that time. And fi Surah Al-Hujurat. We wanted to bring that verse to show the importance of takfir and staying away from that. And that is the ni'mah of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Tayyip, the talk that we would do today. Why is Nafis Abu Zaid a deviant? Number one, there is a checklist for why I made for some people or for others to deem me a deviant. The first is he was on the show alleged so called night shift. Okay, so that was one of the um, allegations, or that's actually true, that's not an allegation. That was one of the points that were made against me for my deviancy. Um, he interviewed people with whom the scholars have refuted, um, such as Shadi Muhammad, uh, some other brothers that wasn't, um, I guess, didn't make the uh, didn't make the checklist or something like that, and they was problematic with some other brothers. So I guess because we interviewed them, me and my co-host Abu Isa, Abu Isa, I mean Isa Abu Isa, that we uh, somehow I guess was off the minutes for that. He went against the noble brothers, uh, such as Hamza Abdul Razak, um, Musa Richardson and many others uh, he doesn't have the support of the noble brothers okay and he doesn't have the support of germantown these these two checks are just like similar so anyway and then he isn't a student of knowledge all right so we're going to address them inshallah we're going to address the points of my deviancy soon i just want to bring something very 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 important to devi deviation before we begin because this talk is especially for people who want to hear to al islam deviation here in al-islam have rules it has regulations and have a certain methodology and that have to be embarked upon in order to place a ruling on someone outside of what is islam and what people have made in their groups and their schisms then yes i am a deviant i am a deviant and i will get to that later inshallah and i'll explain what i mean by that yes i am a deviant I'll tell you um this is a tremendous book and i want to uh, thank our brother ali davis for um, introducing us to the works of this tremendous scholar over there in Mecca, who had did a, a beautiful research on the issue of the mas'ala dealing with bid'ah and to place innovation and hukums and rulings upon people. Um, in the second chapter of this was tremendous book, he had what they call hukmu mu'ayini that call it for aslam and usul al a'imat al salaf. The ruling, okay, the ruling pertaining to an individual placing innovation, disbelief, or kufr the uh, um, upon an individual who opposes one of the fundamental principles of the principles of the of the imam al salaf of the imams of the salaf. Okay, he says briefly that dealing with the first chapter, which was the first Beth. Research was dealing with anyone who goes against the fundamentals, fund fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. The person has exit from the guidance of the Salaf al Salih and do they become from the people of Bid'ah? He dealt with that. He said, as for this second chapter, it deals with Ta'yeen. Now taking that ruling and placing it on an individual 
individuals specifically, not a group of people. We're talking about to place bid'ah, a hukum, on someone individually, like Nafis, you are an innovator. To place that on me, it had to be, according to the dean, it got to be some guidelines, okay? This stuff is po how power, man, because it, it makes you think, like, if anybody reading this stuff, he said, he says here, he said, وَحُكْمُ al afraad he said, dealing with this issue, it is some detailed information. He said, if it's the case, as we've seen in the first chapter, if it's the case that not everyone who falls into an act of innovation is that innovation have felt upon him. If it's the case that not everyone who falls into an act of innovation is not an innovator, if that's the case, that not everyone, you gotta pay attention now because the hadith that comes in Iman Nawawi, the fifth hadith on the third day, Um Abdullah, Um Um Mu'mineen, Aisha Taradi Allah Ta'ala Anha, she even bring two different versions, one in Bukhari, one, one in Bukhari, one Muslim, one in Muslim. And in those two hadith or two versions, one deal with the act of innovation and one deal with the innovator. The first hadith say, Man ahtada fi amrina. Whoever ahtata introduced something into this affair was malisa minhu for that is not from it, then it will be rejected. This deal with the innovator. The next hadith say man amila amilan, laysa alayhi amruna, whoever does an action that's not in accordance. This deal with the innovation. Alright? So even in this narration, Sheikh Salih Fazan pointed out in his explanation, and many of the other other ulama, we see that. There is a difference between innovation and an innovator. There's a difference between the two. Unfortunately, nowadays, many people don't even know the difference. Um, but there is a difference. So he says here, if that is the case, he said, He said, in, in that is that the person that you're trying to place this ruling upon, if it be that he is one who leans and inclines towards the Salaf, all right? And that his source that he used for his evidence, right? For whatever position that he takes is in agreement and in accordance to that or the guidelines of the Salaf. Well, and it be the case that he have felt into something, all right? Something which opposes the usul of the salaf however he does not incline nor does he make opposition due to it nor does he make opposition due to it or transgress because of it he said he said that this person he said that this person has not exited pay attention now this person has not exit <laughs> has not exited the arena of salafiyah Due to this mistake, this mistake that he felt in that opposes the usul of Ahl Sunnah, he have not left the arena of Salafia. Let's stop here. Let's stop here. That checklist that we read earlier, if you notice and do all of those points of why I'm a deviant, none of it falls into any of this from the asul min usul of Salaf. Number one, it don't fall into that. Number two, it don't even fall into the furu, dealing with the furu, the sods, the subsidiary issues in Al Islam. It doesn't fall into that. It actually, if you was to analyze it, it only falls into what we call a personal issue. That's not even dinia. All right, it's going to be more saturated with dunya than it is with din, and that's how it is with most of this stuff. All right, he says he goes on. He said, well, يَكُونَ مُبْتَدِعًا And then this person should not be ruled as an innovator. This person should not be ruled as an innovator. Well, in the you call, it is only said about this individual. وَأَفَكَ أَهْلَ الْبِدْعَ فِي كَذَا وَكَذَا In this issue that this person had made a mistake in, he agrees with the people of innovation regarding that. He said, And this is only said about him in order to clarify the weakness of his statement or his position. What? Huh? 
Assalamu alaikum, F1. Apologize for that. Tell you, um, we're just gonna finish this last little brief points before getting into those other points because this, this is extremely important. Only not because of because it's me. It's because anybody. We have to. We gotta stop people. If you see brothers and sisters using the term bid'ah and stuff like that, if you don't educate yourself, purely, you have to ever period. Period. You have to educate yourself, and then you have to educate others. So they just stop doing that and making these weird claims, man. It's really weird claims based on nothing. So what we say about this person, if we see a person who falls into this, then what we say about that person is, the Tobayan Adolfo, we're doing this only to clarify the position or the statement that the person made, all right? And we do not say about that person who fell into that mistake that he is like them, meaning like the people of innovation. And we do not also group him with them by placing a ruling on him. And pay attention to this because this is the important part. If the conditions are met, all the conditions that make a person an innovator, inshallah, if, if the condition, if the condition are met that make someone an innovator if all of them are met and those things would prevent the person those things that would prevent those rulings to apply to that person is fulfilled then he is like them and the ruling is he is of them all right that's the conditions you have to make sure all the conditions so now we have to ask ourselves if you don't even know the conditions what makes a person an innovator you shouldn't even be talking about this issue period if you don't know what makes a person an innovator, then you should not be talking about innovation, period, of a person. This is basically what it is, if you don't understand that. Number two, if you don't know what prevents a person from being an innovator, then you still shouldn't be talking about this issue. This is what he's saying. Now, I want you to pay attention because a lot of us, especially a lot of us, like to quote Iman Ahmed. And I know a lot of us like to quote Imam Ahmed for obvious reasons. I mean, we like ster sterny people. We like to quote Umar al Khattabi. Shaitan ran away from him, right? He walk on one side, the Shaitan is on the other side. Umar was stern, okay? So we like this, you know, you know, Imam Ahmed was tested with the fitna of the Quran being created. He was actually locked up in prison and so forth, and he took a tremendous stance for Ahl al with Jama'ah. That's true. But look at Imam Ahmed. Look at Imam Ahmed. It was said to Abi Abdullah, that was his kunya. His kunya was Abi Ab Abu Abdullah, Ahmed ibn Hamdul. It was brought to him about an individual who was a muhaddith. An individual who reached the level of being a muhaddith. Okay? So he was a scholar. We're not talking about a person who wasn't a scholar. This wasn't a layman. We're talking about this was a scholar. Some other individuals came to Ibn Ahmed about a scholar of hadith. That this scholar of hadith actually said that whoever bear witness that the ten companions that are promised paradise now pay attention that whoever bear witness to the validity of that hadith whoever bear witness to the validity of that that the ten people that, that was promised paradise from the sahabas all right are in jannah look what the person said he said he's a mutadir now this is what the scholar is saying so they brought this statement of this scholar to iman ahmed that he is claiming that a person is upon bid'ah if he validates those authentic narrations that mention and indicate that the ten people of the companions are in paradise. And we know those narrations are authentic. So you'd be thinking like, what's wrong with the guy, right? Why is he saying something like this? It's clear cut hadith that are authentic, right? And he's calling a person an innovator if you, if you believe in him. Look what the response of Iman Ahmed. Imam Ahmed, he said, La'allahu jahilun la yadri. So if you, for those who are waiting for Imam Ahmed to run him out, you know what I'm saying? For, yo, for those who are waiting for Imam Ahmed to cut his head off, to go real, you know, because it was a crazy statement, no doubt. Imam Ahmed said, perhaps he's ignorant and he don't know. This was the response. Perhaps this scholar who made this heinous statement is ignorant of the actual details of these ahadiths and he does not know. This is Iman Ahmed. He didn't place and said he's a this and he's a that. No, he gave him an excuse what we supposed to do for one another. 
Nowadays, there's no excuse. So I saw him at the match here with the Sufi, so he's a Su SubhanAllah. Where's the excuse? I saw him walking down the street. He was like, where is the excuse? <laughs> SubhanAllah, Dean, we far away from the Salaf, man. That's why I don't like people keep, you know, come, come, don't, don't talk that stuff to me. We Salaf, there's Salaf, there. I mean, you're just saying it. You, you, if you really was bonding the Dawah to Salaf, where's your excuses? You don't make no excuses for your brothers? Oh, you make excuses for those who are part of your clique, huh? May Allah protect us. I mean, look, so the Sheikh continues. He says, he brings the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah. All right. Dealing with the issue of stipulation, the stipulations of the evidence must reach the person whom you're trying to place the ruling specifically upon regarding innovation. Okay, so we have to make sure that the hujjah, the evidence, reach the person. So before you start running around saying, yeah, he's a muqtadir, did you even make sure that the evidence was actually reached him and that he actually understand what he felt into? Do you, did that even cross your mind? He said, He said, if it's the case that you witness that a statement was made, a, a, a statement that was erroneous was made and it emanated from an imam of the past. And this person, excuses were made for him. If you can see that a statement was made by an imam of the past and this was the type of excuse that was made for him of this erroneous statement, right? Without any evidence reaching him, then how much so for the one whom the evidence reach? He says, for this reason, The innovation that's placed upon the person whom it reached those ahadiths of the punishment of the grave and their likes, either Ankara, if he rejected that, that Aisha ta'ala anha and similar to her, have not deemed a person to be upon innovation if they did not know that the peace the, the, the dead, the deceased cannot hear those who are in the grave. There were people who was denying that. Alright? He said, Fahad the Aslan al Deem for Tadabu for Innu Nafia. In other words, he's saying that that affair, which is a tremendous affair, dealing with the issue of the punishment of the grave. There are many ahadiths that uh, talks about the punishment of the grave. And also we know that there's hadith that indicates that the dead can actually hear. Um, however, there are some people who denied it or haven't, didn't know about the authenticity of these ahadiths or um, they didn't know everything in detail, so they denied them. But however, the people of the past did not deem these individuals to be uh, disbelievers um, or people upon innovation. He says, so you should ponder. This is a beneficial thing to ponder on that. If they wasn't so hasty to rule them to be innovators in issues like this, why are we so hasty right now to rule someone to be an innovator? Why? He said, and if it's the case that the person you're trying to place this ruling upon, he be from those who actually surrender. He's from those who actually follow and try to imitate the Salaf. All right? He takes his sources from those sources that they take. However, he felt into some innovation. Then it should not, the ruling should not descend upon him until or unless after all of the conditions are met for place, making someone and those things that prevent the conditions from being met are removed. He said, ask for the one who definitely, you know, in this case, all of that has been met and those conditions there, meaning the one who makes a mistake in these fundamentals, the things that you cannot make a mistake in. And we're talking about not subsidiary issues, we're talking about Akita issues that are that are stuck. The fundamentals. If a person make a mistake in those things, then the ruling is placed around upon him immediately. And likewise, you see what the case that many of the scholars of the past, when it came to the people who have 
made mistakes, especially in the Asma West. In fact, like those different groups, like the Mu'tazila and the Ashara and all that, you seen that they deemed those individuals actually to be what they are. And a lot of the scholars did not call them, um, they did not call them disbelievers. A lot of the scholars did not place tech fear upon them. However, they were as people who were innovators due to the issues that they did and the fundamentals. When you go against Allah's attributes and his names and so forth, and these are the fundamental issues like that, they're not subsidiary issues, then yes, the ruling is placed upon you immediately. All right? And that's not for any lay person to jump up and see where I'm going to place that ruling on someone. We're almost done. Uh, and he said, it should not be understood just because we have a stipulation that all the conditions to make a person an innovator must be met and all those things that will prevent that must be removed. Just because we have this stipulation, it should not be understood that we are silent about innovation. Understand the difference. Just because we don't, we have these conditions there doesn't mean that because a person who fell, fell into innovation that we're not going to say something about the innovation. No, we're going to say something about the innovation that he felt into. Now, we might don't be hasty to place the hook him upon him, the ruling, but we're still going to talk about the innovation itself. He said, well, I know he said, uh, he said, um, he said, we're not going to remain um, 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 silent about the innovation. Uh, nor are we not going to sit there and not clarify to others about his dalal, his misguidance, or the misguidance itself. He said, for no doubt, unrestrictedly, innovation is and always will be need to be refuted. No matter, you know, it need to be refuted. So we had to nasu minha, and we're going to warn the people from it. He said, and consideration is well not going to be given to the statement itself, nor the person who made the statement, his position, his status, none of that doesn't matter. When it's innovation, we're going to warn against the innovation. We're going to warn the people against the innovation. As far as placing the ruling specifically upon the person who felt into that innovation, that's a different issue. All right? That's a different issue. But we're not going to overlook the innovation itself. We're not going to overlook the innovation itself. And he says here, um, he said, because if, if the case that we remain silent about the innovation, then the deen of Allah can become confused. All right? He says, um, upon some people, and for that reason, they can become, look what he said, well, he saw that the end of Mubida al Sunnah. For them, they can take something that is innovation and think it to be Sunnah. Okay, if it's not clarified, meaning if we leave it and remain silent about it, then someone can take that act of innovation and deem it to be correct and look at it like it's the sunnah, which is incorrect. So we have to say something about it. All right, and look at the justice here. This is other. You see the justice? A lot of people like to quote Ibn Taymiyyah. Everybody like to quote Ibn Taymiyyah. He was hard and, you know, but look at the justice here. This, again, Ilm, look at the justice. No, we're not going to place the ruling on the person unless certain things be met. But we're going to refute the wrong. We're going to refute the innovation. And this is justice. This is hard. All right? Now I want you to pay attention to the rest of his words. This is beautiful, mashallah. If all of us was to act and implement on this, we wouldn't have what we have right now. Look at Listen to this. He says... By way of this, he says, we warn just because it's the case that we are warning of the innovation itself does not necessitate or obligate that the one who felt into this innovation is a mubtadir, is an innovator. Allahu Akbar. Just because we're warning against the innovation that the individual felt into does not mean just because he felt into it that he's an innovator. You see the difference? Just the, that's not the case. Hatta until when? When would that case be? To wafir fi hu shurut wa tanta fi anhu al mawani kama taqadum takrir dalik fi man kana mustar talaki andhu muwafik li maalihi aymat al salaf. Like we said before, unless the stipulation is met, meaning all the conditions to place someone, a ruling upon someone to be innovative must be met, and all of those things that will prevent that must be removed, and it must follow the guidelines of those leaders of our imams from the Salaf, Allah Akbar. 
We're going to end this part here with the statement of Sheikh Uthameen, Muhammad Salah Uthameen, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, the author bring this in this book. Again, may Allah reward the brother Ali Davis for you know introducing this book to us. I will ask the brother, inshallah ta'ala, can he translate this and render this? I don't know if somebody ever did it into the English language. I think we really need it. I think the uh, the Ummah need this particular research of the Sheikh so we can really start looking at how to look at innovation and hopefully guard our tongues from placing these hukum upon other individuals with no regards. Well, I'm a khata fil aqidah. He said, the Sheikh of Demina. As for a mistake that is made regarding the issue of Akida, he said, if the mistake be that which is in opposition to the methodology of the Salaf, then that person is upon misguidance in that matter without a doubt. He said, Pay attention now. He said, however, the ruling is not placed on that individual, okay, until the evidence has reached him and is established against him. He said, This is the statement of Sheikh Ruthameen. He said, if the proof established against him and he persists and remains upon his mistake, and upon his misguidance, then this individual would be, would be a mubtadir regarding that which he opposes therein of the truth. And then he mentioned about if it is said this is not the statement of uh Sheikh Rathameen here this is the author he says he mentioned here that it is said that there is a difference between the two chapters or two issues regarding tef tekfir declaring someone to be a disbeliever what declaring someone to be what we call a um a disbeliever and declaring someone to be what we call a um a facet and between declaring someone to be an innovator he said the only difference there is that when it comes to tech fear and tough seek then the stipulation is that the evidence must be reached them as whereas when it comes to tepdir, then the evidence then that's not stipulated the answer to this to this question he answer he said there is no difference between these webs <laughs> from the point and angle of the legislation there is no difference, brothers and sisters. If a person says someone is a fasting, it's the same as he saying someone is a kafir. If a person says someone is a kafir, it's the same as if a person says someone is a muqtadir, it's the same as he saying as a person is a kafir. There isn't no difference in the legislation. You got to be careful. There is no difference. There's no, oh, I only call him a fasting. No, I only call him a fasting. I only call him a muqtadir. No, they all share and have the same similar guidelines. You can't just jump out and call somebody these words, man. Like you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful, subhanAllah Adim. You gotta be careful. And this is a tremendous book. We wanted to bring that as a guideline, inshallah ta'ala, just so that we can have understanding before we start throwing out there those words and terminologies. Now, again, going back to the points that was levied against me as why I'm a deviant. Okay, as far as he was on a show called The Night Shift, I was actually one of the individuals who started The Night Shift with another brother, by the permission of Allah. As we can see from the guidelines that the Sheikh had laid down, and we can see from the past, The Night Shift, if you want to look at the permissibility of it or the impermissibility of it, it still wouldn't fall into innovation. Okay? If you want to look at the permissibility of doing a talk, uh, permissibility of interviewing different students, uh, the permissibility of hosting it or calling it that type of name um you know then we will rule it according to the to the quran and the sunnah and we still will see and you know you can ask anyone knowledge we still will see that wouldn't fall under what we call a bid'ah that wouldn't be an innovation tell you um as far as the um and by the way i always say this i'm gonna say this again the night shift itself was a necessary evil 
The only thing, certain things I wish we could have left off not doing, but I know the times and the place that we live in that it was needed. And that was, you know, we got advised by multiple brothers, um, some brothers who agree with what we were doing, some brothers who didn't agree with what we were doing, but nevertheless, they would, they would make the consistent theme of advising us when we were doing the night shift, if you can leave out the names of the brothers, if you can just refute the Kauai or, or bring the Kauai things and refute those points that the brothers have made the mistake in, then this is no problem, that best, um, but only if you leave off that. And this was the main thing that they was, they was advising me and Isa or Isa with, is leaving off those particular things. Um, uh, as far as us interviewing some personalities that might be problematic or have some definitely problematic, they wish that we would have asked them some more serious questions uh, as to they cannot weasel around and get out. And a lot of those best on those issues there. As um, far as he interviewed people with the scholars who have refuted. Again, in that book I just read, we didn't go over it, but you can go back to um, Ali Davis' uh, talk that he got on YouTube dealing with the innovation, what is innovation? I think that's the title. It's called What is Innovation? You were looking there <laughs> that he mentioned the Sheikh in the first bab, mentioned how about when it comes to placing a ruling on someone that he's an innovator, then when a scholar reaches that level and make that, it's an ijtihad. It's called an independent fatwa. All right, I don't like these. We're probably here, but independent research based off the evidence that the Sheikh have that he came up and said that that person is innovative. Just because the Sheikh have deemed that person to be that, that don't mean everyone else have to follow him in his had. And this is something that people don't understand. And this is a very important. Just because one person deems someone to be that doesn't mean that everyone have to take that same position. All right, and this is not even the case because I don't even know none of the people that we were interviewing that any of the scholars called the Muqtadir. I don't, I mean, if you got something, bring it to me. Not what the noble, <laughs> the noble brother said. Bring me the stake words that literally said that so-and-so and so-and-so was a Muqtadir, was an enemy. I don't think we got any of that. I never, they never reached me that so-and-so was a Muqtadir. I know you're going to bring the statement of Sheikh Obeid. He said about Jadid Muhammad that he's dog with Mudil. Uh, and if that's not the same statement of saying someone is a Muqtadir and all that, I don't got time for all that. Show me where a person is that was leveled that he was a Muqtadir by any of these scholars. And then number two, if even if they did say that, let's just even if they did say he was a Muqtadir, right? Is it binding on me now and my co-hosts that we have to follow that? And then on, then just not even that, just, just, let's just say that if we didn't, let's say that we follow, we didn't follow. Is it now binding that I can no longer do an interview with the brother because he... He been refuted by the scholars? Like, oh, come on, subhanAllah thing, right? So we have to look at all of those issues right there. Um, he went against the noble brothers, like Hamza Abdul Razak. So that you know, we went against, we didn't, I don't even like to use the word we went against. We came from the bab of Nasiha, whether you like it or not. The truth is, we saw some things and we have witnessed and experienced some things that were taking place that our brothers, in faith have did or have seen and have not spoken out against or dealt with the issue and we have took a public route to advise them because it wasn't in our best interest because we have done it and I'm a witness I said in over about five different meetings with different brothers specifically and every time I said in those meetings it never came out right at all I've been called different names, I've been talked about, I've been this, I've been that, I've been that, and it never went anywhere. So when we seen that approaching them on a regular basis and talking to them on that way wasn't getting us nowhere, we took it to the platform. And when we took it to the platform, it seemed to grant gains or, or, or gain some legs, as they say. And we was able to do that by the permission of Allah Jalla wa'ala, and we was able to carry that out, okay? So as far as us going against no we didn't go against anyone but what we did do is we rectified and we corrected and we gave advice to many brothers who are in the arena of dawa on things now were we 100 percent correct about everything about what we said and what we didn't say i wouldn't agree with that i'm not perfect i know there was stuff that i said i'm still asking forgiveness for it was things that i said or blurted out and emotional i'm talking come on everyone that talks is going to make a mistake all right so i mean yes but was the points valid? Yes. I can go to my grave believing that. Was the points valid that we made far as with the brothers and advising them on? Yes, that was correct. Okay? He doesn't support, he doesn't have the support of the noble brothers. Okay? 
I have an issue with using the no the, the title. No one should be using the title noble anything for me. You know what I mean? I mean, you want to talk about to all their humbleness. You shouldn't be using that. And then first of all, don't even try to compare it to what you see the scholars saying, this person or that person. Because when you see scholars, nine times out of ten, they're not saying it about themselves. There are other people saying it about them. And some of those scholars, like we've seen and is recorded, like Sheikh Rathimine and even like Sheikh Alabani, and some of them scholars would actually dislike to even be called that. And we've seen from, not saying that, uh, we've seen from the likes of people that we have here in the, in the West, uh, like Dr. Tahir White himself, when they was calling him Sheikh and all of these things like that, he corrected it immediately when he saw it. So some people will correct that stuff immediately when they see it. And not a humble this. Even Sheikh Rabia himself, he didn't like to be called uh, even Jahu Ta'adil. He actually, I heard it with my own ears, his own voice. He actually said, an akraho. He said, I dislike it. I hate it. I abhor them calling me this title, um, uh, the Imam or the flag bearer of Jahu Ta'adil. Okay? So, you know, you're going to have scholars who will actually go against that. So, all that running around talking about the noble brothers, like, give me a break with that. I mean, have some humbleness. I mean, alhamdulillah, our brothers and faithful, we're not going to talk about the noble brothers. SubhanAllah <laughs> Azim. And then it, you, you know what come with that? This is why the early man they spoke against running around talking about as Salafi. Sheikh Rabia spoke against it. Sheikh Fuzan spoke against it. Sheikh Rathamine spoke against it. There are many scholars who spoke against a person taking the nisbah at the end of his name as Salafi. Running around talking about my name is Tariq as Salafi. I'm not saying it's saying that you're Salafi. That's different. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying calling yourself Salafi. I'm saying adding that to your name. <laughs> So when you talk to somebody, yeah, my name is Abdul Malik as Salafi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my name is Abdul Aziz as Salafi. That nisbah that you're taking at the end of your name like that, that's taskiyah to nafs. As Sheikh Salih Fuzani said, this is a purification of oneself. Because now you got to live up to that. You got to live up to that. You as Salafi, okay, you ascribe to the Salafi. You have to live up to that now. So now you're talking about you noble, then what if I see you doing all ignoble things? So we didn't calling this guy noble this and noble that, but he's the guy that goes upside his woman's mouth on a deli, he just beat his wife up. But we call him noble. Or he the guy that cheat people out of business. Or he the guy he does this, he does that. But he's noble. Why would you be like that's? Um, be careful. Don't just run around throwing names around because somebody studied somewhere. It's a lot of things. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the support of the German town. All right, this is similar to the first, the other one, the other point. And I have people actually said this when we was the Imam of the Masjid that uh, the Masjid is not upon the Dawah because we don't have the support of the administration of German town. I mean, I didn't never knew that. that as we've seen, I didn't never knew that that was even written down as a rule <laughs> that can levy you would be upon innovation. I, I, I never knew that. I didn't know a mass should hold that much weight in the dean now. We're not talking about, we're not talking about what you might believe. I'm talking about in the dean. That the Aimit the Salaf knew about Germantown mass shit way back then. Come on, stop this. All right. Uh, and this is why it's important. I remember Shikr mean it's on YouTube. An individual wanted to read a poem. And the Sheikh let him read a poem. But in the poem, the, the, the man started going... He started praising the Sheikh crazy, you know, and he said some statements. So the Sheikh stopped him and then told him, uh, you know, change it around. What if you say this? Boom, boom. So he went on again and then he started praising the Sheikh more. So the Sheikh stopped him again and the people were like, Sheikh, let's let him finish it. He said, no, we're not going to let him finish it. Let no Afik for have that. This is the Sheikh said, so we don't agree with this. And then he gave us three tremendous points. He said, the truth should not be tied to no man for three tremendous points. I advise you to go back and listen to that talk. And here the Sheikh Tawad, the humbleness, and he breaking down the haq, that we do not tie or connect the truth to any man. Don't ever run around here talking about mashes so-and-so is on the haq, and we tie the truth to that haq. Is you crazy? So what if mashes so-and-so go off, rear to the left? So now everybody that was following mashes so-and-so, and they reared off to the left, you going to follow them too? Come on. You got to be careful with that stuff. You know what I'm saying? The, the criterion is laid out. Sheikh Islam to me, he said, we follow a person according to their adherence to Quran and the Sunnah. If their adherence to Quran and the Sunnah is 100%, then that's how we follow that person, 100%. If that person is 75%, then we follow him 75% to its adherence, not to the person himself. Because the person himself can be on it today and off tomorrow. I mean, these are principles like one on one. I don't, I don't know what happened. I mean, the brothers used to always say them. The hadith of um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud: Follow those for the other that those who want to follow anybody you want to follow anybody. Follow those who are already cut met, who already died. Their position is not going to change. We already know what they died upon. It ain't going to change. So you know, they're you're safe. 
if you follow them? How are you gonna say you follow somebody that's alive who position can change? That you're not saying. This is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. This is the Salaf. So where you overlook those principles, these are principles that you should have locked in. <laughs> Period. We ain't connecting no truth to no man, let alone to a masjid. As Sheikh Mahmoud Lufti so eloquently put it, he said whenever they took Salafia and they tied it to a person, place, or thing, that's when it was a problem. Whenever they took Salafia, I want to repeat that again. Whenever they took Salafia and they connected it to a person, place, or thing, it became a problem. <laughs> he doesn't support, he said he isn't a student of knowledge. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you on that. You know, whether I'm a student of knowledge or not, I mean, that's up to Allah Azza wa Jalla. It used to be a time when being a talib or ilm really was about sincerity. It really was about the dedication that you you place and the intention that you have to seek Allah's peace. It wasn't really about having an honorary title or having some status amongst the people or having people's eyes turned towards you or just being known as a student of knowledge. Man, if I go throughout my whole life and someone say that that brother is an talib or ilm, I'm happy with that. I don't want that type of baggage that comes with that. But if Allah Jalla wa Ala looks at me and say, well, I gave you a zeal, I gave you something whereby you can understand me and you took it and you did what was right by it, then that's the only one I need to worry about, <laughs> worry about me being a talib or ilm. But the consistent theme I wanted to bring from all of these points, and this is what they have levered against me about me not being, a, being a, calling me a deviant. None of this have anything to do with the usul al-deen, as we can see. None of it have anything to do with the Furu Deen, as we can see. And even so, after what we just read, even if I did felt into some innovation throughout of whatever these are, if they somehow connected it some way, um, it still can't rule upon me that I'm a Muqtadir. You know what I mean? Where do I call to it? So for someone to run around and say that Nafi Sabu Zayd, or anybody for that matter, is a Muqtadir, be careful. Be careful. Be careful when you talk about somebody being a Muqtadir. You know, because Allah must on. You shouldn't want no one to be a Muqtadir. Don't make me a Muqtadir because I don't go to Germantown. And don't make me a Muqtadir because I don't listen to Somali. And don't make me a Muqtadir because I don't quote other scholars' names. I might have some of their books in my library. I might listen to some of their talks, but... If I don't listen to them, that doesn't make me a Muqtadir. None of that makes me a Muqtadir. I mean... At all, I'm not a deviant because of that. But I am a deviant. I'm gonna repeat this. I am a deviant. I am a deviant based off the statement of Sheikh Rutaimin. Sheikh Rutaimin was asked about um, the men, uh, about the group known as Salaf, Salaf, the Salafi. All right, those who follow Salafi Minaj, and you know it's widespread. This actual talk that he gave us on YouTube is translated. The Sheikh said, as for the group, they call themselves Salafi, and whoever agrees with them is with them, and whoever doesn't agree with them aren't with them. He said, then we don't have nothing to do with that. As for that group, then to this group, I say, Nafis is a deviant. To that group who have his own set of principles, outside of the principles of the Sharia, and that which is in the Sunnah, for those who have made their own principles and made it that whoever we raise up is the ones that we take and follow and whoever we debase is the ones we don't take and follow, we discard, then I am a deviant according to dumb people. Then yes, I am a deviant. So I don't get upset so much when I see someone saying that I am a deviant and I see that with a person just following some, some group that he don't have no understanding. I don't get upset with that. You know why? Because that's not what I'm mad at. Because according to their rules, I am a deviant. You know, look, I mean, think about it. Some of the Shiites call the people of Sunnah deviants. According to their rules, we are deviants, right? But for someone to say they adhere to the Sharia and to the Sunnah and to the blessed deen of Allah and His Messenger, to say I'm a deviant? Nah, bro. You got to have some type of guidelines for that. You want to have to follow something that we laid down for that. You can't just say that. That, that is going to be bothering something to me. But if you're if you're one of those guys that's stuck on Gilligan's Island somewhere and you're you're just that, then yeah, go ahead, you can say it all day. But if you're someone who's trying to say you follow Kitab was Sunnah Allah Fahma Salaf, and you're saying I'm a deviant, you're going to have to bring some hujjah. 
And if you don't even know what hujja is, and you don't even know what burahin and all this stuff is, then you need to, you don't even need to be talking like this. You need to be quiet. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, I can't believe the stuff that we read. This stuff, if you think about it, this stuff is like one-on-one -on -one information that is there for all of us. And you would think like, because the truth is nobody's really reading. And I forgot to mention this last point. Also, I'm a deviant because, like the brother told me, because I think for myself. Never be a yes man. Learn Arabic, brothers and sisters. Learn Arabic. Wallahi, you're going to see that the fadu of anybody that you see over you or whatever the case that you think that's over you or whatever, all that's going to change once you start having the same tools they got. All right, you got Arabic, I got Arabic. So what? You can call the sheikh, I can call the sheikh. Okay. You can read that book, I can read that book. Okay. Now you're going to start seeing where you stand at. Where are you going to be at? You're going to see people not want to work with you. You're going to see people not want to do anything with you. Why? Because you can think on your own. I didn't need nobody to come tell me that because they said Tahir Wyatt was an innovator that I had to second guess that. Nobody had to come talk to me and say that. When the brother said it to me, I actually asked him his proof. He got religion with me outside of Mukbil. He didn't want to call me all types of names. I got to Asa towards Tar. I don't even know Tar. How I got to Asa with him, I mean, I know him now, but I'm saying I didn't know him back then. So how I got to Asa towards him? But that's what he said. Only because I questioned it. Only because I didn't go with what someone tells me. If you say anybody's an innovator, I don't care who he is, I'm going to question you. Okay, so what's the Dalil or not? Whether I know him or not. And it's even bad if I know him. It's even bad if I know the person, subhanAllah then, right? But if I don't know the person, I'm still gonna stick up for him and say, well, you gotta bring me some dalil. And this is where we gotta get at. Stop leaving your deen in the hands of other people. Stop being parakeets. Stop being what they call um, puppets, moving around. So-and-so said this, so-and-so said this. No, you better go ahead and question so-and-so. It's your right. Sheikh Bekar Abu Zaid, he bring it in the hill of the tolerable ilm. The etiquette is seeking knowledge. It's the right of the talib to ask a question. And, 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 and the scholar cannot get upset if a person asks a question. Where do we get that from? Ask. Show that you got some intelligence. Okay, you said such and such and you said such and such. Okay, let's compare that. Where can I find that? Where can this at? And then this makes you strong. This is what makes a talib. Okay? This, as we mentioned by Sheikh Alabani and, uh, and the likes. That the Talib, what he does, he go research. He does the research first, then he asks the scholar. It's backwards nowadays. They had made us like Sufi so much, we become like, we want some Sufi stuff. Our scholars are so mysticism. Whatever they say, we take, we don't have to look. No, that's not how it is. How we do it is, well, if you got the ability to research the issue, whether it's in English or Arabic, and most of the stuff is in Arabic, so you got to know Arabic. But if you have the ability to research the issue, research until you exhaust yourself out. Once you exhaust yourself out and you didn't hit a standstill, then you contact the Sheikh and said, well, this is what I found. This is what all I can bring up on the issue. Sheikh, can you help me understand this? Now we can talk. The Sheikh will look at you even different. Like, okay, here we got, we got, a, we got a tall up here. We got a student here. Now someone I'm going to call the Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, do B come after A in the ABCs? Sheikh, do uh, tag, you know, do tag have... That's how it is. Like, you, Sheikh, can... You going to call the Sheikh for every single thing now? Come on, be honest. Sheikh... And then they do that, they scare you with these tactics, and then when it comes back and forth and you think about it, you will watch them make a ruling real quick without even contacting the shit. Like Anwar Wright, literally, the man literally said that Masjid Toba should be shut down and that the people need to get on the bus, wherever they at, and go to the four massages that are known upon Salafia. They need to close down the masjid. This was his words. The brother who he said this to looked at him and said, Aki, you just passed a ruling. He said, well, we can call a shake now. This was his words. He said, well, we can call a shake now. And this issue, you just passed the ruling. Now we should call a shake. I'm not bringing Anwar name up to to troll him or to, to speak bad about him or anything. This is not my case. This is actually a true case that actually happened. But I just want to show you something. You can't be just naive, man. Somebody say something, man, challenge it. If I say something and you, it don't sit right with you, challenge it. Make me produce my proof. <laughs> That's all. Make me produce my proof. Just don't call me an innovator. I still can be faulty. I mean, alhamdulillah, I take accountability. If I'm wrong in that issue or if I'm wrong in my understanding of that issue, trust me. Once you bring it to my attention, I'm going to accept it. I'll take the hop. Mm, and that's, that's it. But Allah, Allah is best, man. Please, please, please. That was clickbait. 
I know I'm not a deviant, but like I said to the Salafi group that is out there, that anybody agree with them, that's on the hawk, and anybody don't agree with them, isn't on the hawk, then I am a deviant to y'all. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm sorry to take anybody time up for that. Um, but I believe those principles of the Sheikh was actually important. And I believe that all of us can benefit from that. If you hear someone talking bad by another brother or sister, you should not lend your ear. At the very least, do not lend your ear to it. You don't have to go back and forth with them. You don't have to squabble with them. Just don't lend your ear to it. That's all they're looking for. And then sometimes you got to think that a person wants to feel a part of something. Everybody want to feel a part of something. You know what I mean? I had so many brothers. I had a brother apologize to me. Um, when that night shift stuff was going on, I had a brother calling me deviant and everything. And then afterwards, we was talking in the inbox and going back and forth, and he was able to see what he was seeing. Yeah, I owe you a big apology. You know what I'm saying? You, you just happen that sometimes. Some people feel some type of way. We're emotional, you know? And, and we might feel a certain type of way, but once the hawk hit, and once that truth settles in, you start to think like, whoa, the brother wasn't, he wasn't tripping, you know? He wasn't tripping. And I'm not trying to trip, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the rank of all of our brothers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all the mistakes of all the du'ats that least try to hold firmly to the da'wah to salafiyyah and whatever capacity they, they are. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise their rents and to forgive them for their mistakes. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to keep us away from their mistakes and to allow us to acknowledge their mistakes and to point out their mistakes and correct their mistakes. If there's mistakes that need to be corrected, then we ask Allah to, allow us to give us the strength and do not make us cowards and let us stand forth for the haq no matter whoever it be, no matter who or whatever. And we, we refute those things that's not there, but we don't have to warn for nobody. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. And yes, brothers and sisters, I know my co-host mentioned it to you. I'll mention it to you all. We will be bringing back the night shift. We will be bringing back the night shift. We will bring the night shift, but not for the reason you think. Okay, I'm just going to leave that with that. The night shift is coming back, inshallah, but not for the reason you think. Okay, inshallah. Subhanakallahumbi hamdi ashadu ala ilayhi wa sallam.